a small religious group. You're peaceful, you're law-abiding, yet you don't want to support or fund the state religion. As a result, you're discriminated against in education and employment. You're sometimes ostracised from the local community and you're definitely excluded from the political process. That sounds like it could be happening in some far-flung place today. But it was the reality of life for many Christians in this country just 200 years ago. These people were known as dissenters or nonconformists. My own church was founded as a rural Baptist chapel in 1808 by a local group of Baptists, which was a dissenting Christian group at that time. They weren't exactly welcomed with open arms by the local parish church, but the Baptists were a, a pious lot and they just got on with working and worshipping as they wanted and tried to keep their heads down and out of trouble in the local community. But it wasn't long before their peace was shattered in the form of a man called Anthony Allington. Allington was a veteran soldier based here at Langard Fort. During 1812, he began to become interested in the Christian faith and attended Walton Chapel, which is about three miles away, with a friend. Subsequently, he was baptised and was accepted into church membership. But it was from that point that everything started to unravel. Allington, by all account, was a, a rough and ready soldier who the relatively new church found him a little bit too hot to handle but they did try to persevere. They found him so difficult that they even had a special heading for him in the church minute book, entitled, The Awful Case of Anthony Allington. So, what was so awful about Anthony Allington? It all came to a head in February 1813, when Allington left the evening communion service one Sunday and ended up in a local hostelry, where it's recorded that he spent the night drinking and singing. Not the crime of the century, you may think, but it was what Allington was singing that so vexed the Baptists. When challenged, Allington said that he could see nothing lustful about singing an innocent song about our brave Lord Nelson. Why should the Baptists find a song about Nelson such a big issue? It all comes down to the Napoleonic Wars fought in the period 1803 to 1815. It was noticed that dissenters kept themselves to themselves. Their opponents started to ask, well, if they dissent against the Church of England, surely they must dissent against the Crown, because the two, they would argue, were inseparable. Surely dissenters couldn't be trusted as patriotic citizens. That appalled Baptists who were loyal to king and country. Many served in the army and navy during the Napoleonic Wars. So therefore they found it necessary to start affirming their patriotism in any way they could and nothing typified patriotism more than Lord Nelson. Why is that you might ask? Well for that we need to go to Spain. So here we are at Cape Trafalgar on the southwest coast of Spain. It's about halfway between Cadiz and the Straits of Gibraltar. And it was off this cape on the 21st of October 1805 that the British Navy won one of its most comprehensive and famous victories. 33 British ships faced a superior force of 41 French and Spanish ships. In the battle that followed, the British dealt a devastating blow to the enemy forces. 22 enemy ships were captured or destroyed for no British losses. British casualties were light compared to enemy losses, but the highest profile of British death was that of Admiral Horatio Nelson himself. Even before he ever embarked for Trafalgar, Nelson had attained an almost superstar status. His death at Trafalgar thrust him from superstar into legend. Nelson was revered as a hero, a martyr, as everything that embodied Britain. To disrespect Lord Nelson was tantamount to treason. 
dissenters latched onto this and realised that if they spoke patriotically of Nelson, then they would silence their critics. Unfortunately, Anthony Allington had gone into a pub full of Walton locals and he'd sung a song in a drunken state about Nelson and it wasn't an innocent song, in fact it was a very satirical song and as a result he'd insulted the memory of the great Lord Nelson. But to the Baptists, his singing this song could have had serious consequences for them in a neighbourhood where they were suffering from prejudice and discrimination. As a result, Allington and the Baptists parted company. What can we learn from this? Well, if you're a Christian, take care because your actions reflect on the Jesus that you serve. These are days in which the church generally has a poor image. Sometimes the criticism is justified when the actions of a small number bring disrepute on the name of Christ. But the Christian faith stands for the exact opposite of what many accuse it of. It's good news for everyone, so think carefully of how you act. Does your life really reflect the goodness and the love of Jesus? The end of the Napoleonic Wars in 1815 marked a sea change in British politics as far as dissenters were concerned. They were no longer prepared to be disenfranchised, to be discriminated against and to be generally insulted by the establishment as they had been during the wartime period. As a result, they became highly engaged in the political system during that time and they strongly influenced the development of British democracy during the 19th century and also developing the values of freedom and justice that became an important part of social reform during that time. Here's a few verses from Ephesians chapter 5. Therefore, watch carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Walk carefully, walk wisely. In many places in the world today, including here in Britain, freedom and justice can be in short supply. There's still a need to speak and act, to engage in the political system to protect these. This isn't just a call for Christians, it's a call for everyone who wishes to protect these values. Therefore watch carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise.